Here on the show floor at BET 2023, there are hundreds of exhibitors showing off the latest developments in educational technology. I'm Chris Fox. I'll be your guide to the latest tech trends on show. We'll be stepping into the metaverse to have a look at virtual reality learning, seeing the latest ways to learn through play, and we'll be talking about the big topic on everybody's lips, artificial intelligence. Now, there are lots of virtual reality experiences that let students step inside the action. Class VR gives teachers this dashboard so they can keep an eye on what students are doing, make sure they're all looking at the right thing and not secretly downloading any games on their VR headset. So the dashboard will give you an overview of what every VR headset in the room is looking at. You can take control of the action and transport students to another place. And you can even see on this overview what the students are looking at. So if I move the headset around, you'll see this marker move around and I can tell everyone by clicking on the screen, hey, we should be looking over here. I can mark a little point of interest there. This is an ARPedia. It's an educational book with a companion app. I place the book in front of this little giraffe camera here, and then the iPad screen augments the action. So here I have some trees. I can bring in my Argentinosaurus. It'll start munching on the tree up there. Let's bring in a Triceratops as well. It even comes with a little leg of meat here so I can lead the T-Rex away from the scientists and save the day. There's some really interesting things being done around the kind of virtual field trips and things like that, but also increasing numbers of things around kind of virtual science labs and the quality of those I think has improved. I think what we're starting to see now is more interest about how these things can be used uh, in more academic subjects, more as part of day-to-day -day lessons rather than a kind of one-off engagement, exciting, yeah, that's great, but actually how, how can these become part of business as usual? I think we're again also seeing more of a focus on the, the quality of the content and the instruction around it rather than the sort of shiny devices thing and the recognition that for many schools actually buying large numbers of VR headsets is not something that's going to be financially viable and so the, the accessibility of these kinds of experiences on a range of different devices using mobile devices is something that, that has really increased and that is vitally important. Gameplay has always been a good way to get children engaged with learning, and that's what this set is designed to do. This is Photon. It's an AI-powered robot, and it's designed to teach children about how artificial intelligence works. So my first job is to use this training data of a fridge to teach the robot which groceries belong in which shops. And then after I've done the training, I can set the robot on its way. And there we go, Photon is off on its way picking up my groceries for me. And in more advanced levels, you can teach the robot to recognize other vehicles, traffic signals, and even other people. So you can turn it into a police robot and have it chasing shoplifters. Not everyone will think that's a good idea, but the company in its learning materials has a section on AI ethics. This year at BET, there's a whole eSports area. The teams behind me here are getting ready for a little tournament. And British eSports is here as well. They want to get eSports onto the curriculum. The idea is that it can help people with team building, communication skills, even get them into coding. And I know a lot of students will be happy about the idea of playing eSports at school. And, <laughs> and here's an interesting way to get children who aren't really into sports into their exercise. This would have worked on me. It's a video interactive wall. Video games and PE meet. <laughs> 10 points. Probably the hottest topic this year is artificial intelligence. There are tools here that can use machine learning to monitor student progress and recommend individualized learning plans. They're not designed to replace teachers, but assist and reduce workload. Of course, generative AI creating text and images from nothing has got everybody talking. There are concerns that students could use it to cheat on their homework, but I spoke to one AI expert who sees a lot of opportunities. There was a survey done in 2019 that, that said that teachers spend just as much time uh, planning lessons, creating content and marking work as they do doing lessons in front of students. The latest version of ChatGPT, GPT-4, has, has got such a vast knowledge base that it gives you some really quality content. The fact that it can generate things like lesson plans, content for the lesson, ideas, questions. And obviously you're going to want to proof it, you're going to want to check over it, because it's not perfect technology. The teacher's very much important in the process. 
and I think it's exciting because, especially in the short term, it's just it's going to re- it's going to reduce teacher workload. What about the students? There's rumours that they might be using this to cheat on exams or coursework. It's interesting because that question about students cheating on their homework is always the one that kind of comes to mind and and, and causes the most debate. I think it's a bit of a red heron. I think it it's a problem at the at the moment because it's brand new. However. Look, students can download essays, so this is not a new problem. Maybe if a student can use ChatGPT to produce the work that that we're requesting of them, maybe the the work we're requesting of them isn't enough anymore. What kind of resources are there for teachers watching this who have heard about ChatGPT and tech like that, and they want to know a little bit more and maybe try it out? Yeah, so if you if you want like a kind of one on one of of what these tools are, the tools you can use, frameworks to use it with, uh, the the AI classroom book. Uh, which has been released to here at BET. Um, so that's available on Amazon and that, that gives a, com- it's, we, we've called it the ultimate guide because I think we're about, it's about 400 pages long. Maybe they can use ChatGPT to write a condensed version, a summary. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good Summarize. idea. Yeah, yeah, you might want to do that, yeah. And keeping BET at the cutting edge of technology, there are companies here who have already integrated ChatGPT into their products. Now this is Obot, which has ChatGPT connectivity built in, so not only can children use it to learn how to code, they can then have conversations with the robot using all the power of ChatGPT. So right now, this robot is programmed to pretend it is Queen Elizabeth I back in 1601. So let's ask a question. Do you have an iPhone? No, I do not have an iPhone. I have a more important mission. I have no need for an iPhone. And not only can it pretend to be Queen Elizabeth, it can also pretend to be Sir David Attenborough or Sir Isaac Newton, whoever you might need for your curriculum. 